All right, this is just a quick review for those who missed class when we did the review um, so that you can at least have some sort of review before you take the test. Um, I'm just going to go through these really quickly and kind of give a brief explanation of why they are the answer that they are. And then hopefully you're following along and taking some notes and then you'll be able to do well on the, the test. So this is which statement best describes the graph. So is the data, the data has a normal distribution, the data is skewed left, the data is skewed right, or the data is bimodal. First of all, bimodal means two peaks, and this only has one peak, so I know it's not that one. Um, a normal distribution looks like a bell curve, and this one is more off to one side than the other, so it's not that. So what we need to determine is, is it left or is it right? The tricky thing about skewed data is that this is off to the right hand side of our graph and you might think that it's skewed right but what I'm actually looking at is where it drops off from my peak and, and has that tail so this one is pretty straight down but it drops off off to the left and so this one is actually skewed left okay and so some notes you might want to make to yourself is that when the data or when the graph is um, when the data is on the right of the graph it's actually skewed left and then vice versa um, if it's off to the left over here then it drops off to the right so it's then it would be skewed right it's just something that you should just it's the opposite just, just kind of keep that in mind or write it down um, question two it's the same graph it just says which statement best describes this graph. So the data is bimodal. So since it's the same graph and we had that option up here, we know that that's not it. Um, the data is multimodal. The data is unimodal or none of the above. Well, we know it's not bimodal because it only has one peak. It doesn't have two. It doesn't have one. It only has one um, maximum. Um, and so multimodal means more than one. And so it can't be that one. Um, a unimodal, if you think of it like a unicycle with one tire, a unimodal has one. A bicycle, like a bicycle has two tires, bi means two. So unimodal is actually the answer we would choose because it has, has one peak. It has only one peak. Let's put that. Okay. All right. Flipping it over. Says, what is the mean of the following data? Round your answer to the nearest hundredth. Make sure you are paying attention to the whole question because it will tell you how to make this correct. Um, as we were going through this as a class, a lot of people rounded it to the nearest tenth and that was incorrect and you would get it wrong. So in order to find the mean, the mean is where you add them all together. and then divide by how many? Okay, so if I get my calculator out, clear it, um, I've got 67, 58, 34, 67, 39, 55, 71, 63, 40, 42, 37, 45, 50, and 63. Okay, so when I add that all together, I get 731. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 pieces of information. So I'm going to divide that by 14. And I get this number with this big long decimal. And I need to round to hundreds. And hundreds is the second place past the decimal. And since the number after it is 4 or less, this stays the same. I don't change it. So this was 14. And so that, the answer, let's write it actually in the box, is 52.21. Okay. What is the mode? Remember the mode is the one that appears the most. Okay. So if I was to put these all in some kind of order or just kind of look through them, you would see that there is two 67s and there are also two 63s. Um, so the mode is actually 63 and 67. Um, remember with a mode you can have more than one or you can actually have none. If 
these weren't repeated if that if it was just the 167 and the 163 and every number was only in here one time there would be none okay so keep that in mind number five what is the range the range remember is the maximum value minus the minimum value okay so the highest is 71 and the lowest is 34 so 71 minus 34 is 37 so the range is 37 okay the median the median is the number in the middle So in order to find the median, the first thing I have to do is I have to put these in ascending order. You can't just find the middle of it when it's all mixed up like this. You've got to put it in ascending order. So we said we started with 34 was our lowest. And then I got a 39. I have a 37. Um, and then I have 40, 42, 45. Fifty, fifty-five, and fifty-eight. Um, 263s, 267s, and then the highest number is 71. Now, I like, I know that there should be 14 pieces of information here. I like to count them and make sure I didn't forget one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, good. So then from there, I just kind of move my fingers in until I get to the middle. So you can see that there's actually no number in the middle. It's actually between 50 and 55. And so what I have to do is when that happens, if there's no actual middle number, I need to add these two together and then divide by two. So 55 plus 50 is 105, divide that by two. So my mean median is 52.5. Okay, don't forget to put them in ascending order. That's really, really important when it comes to those questions, that the median. All right, it says find the percent, round your percentage to the nearest whole number. No decimals is what whole number means. Okay, so it says out of 98 people, so this is the total number of people that were asked or questioned or whatever, 56 of them are female. What percentage of the group is male? Well, there's only a, you can only pick female or male. So if 56 of the 98 are female, then whatever's remaining is male. So I would do 98 minus 56 to figure out how many of them are actually male, which would be 42. Now to figure out percentage, remember you do part divided by whole, and then whatever you get, you multiply by 100, and that'll give you your percentage. So I'm gonna do 42 is my part, part males, 98 is my whole, okay? 42 divided by 98 is that big number right there, 0. 0.42857, then I'm gonna multiply it by 100, and remember, I'm looking for a whole percentage, and since I'm looking for this number, I'm looking here to see if I need to round. Because this number is greater than five, I need to actually round this up one. So it's 43%. Okay, so this was 0.428, and then I multiplied that by 100, and I got 42.8, but I wanted a whole number, and so this rounds to 43. Okay. Does the data have positive, negative, or no correlation? Remember when we're talking about positive, negative, or no correlation, we're looking to see, as I read my graph from left to right, if my dots are going up, if they're coming down, or if they're just scattered all over the place. If they're going up, that's positive. If they're coming down, that's negative. And if they're just scattered all over, it's no correlation. So since these dots are going up, it's positive. Okay. All 
right, now it says, is the correlation strong or weak? So I can tell if it's strong or weak based on how close it is to an actual straight line. So the closer it is to a straight line, to a straight line, the stronger the correlation. So because this one is pretty close to a straight line, this has a very strong correlation. Okay. What is the best correlation coefficient for this graph? Now, two of these you can rule out right away. If you remember back on question eight, we said that it has a positive correlation. That means its correlation coefficient has to also be positive. So this negative and this negative, we can just get rid of right away because we know it's not negative correlation, it's a positive. Now, because we said it was a strong, it has a strong correlation, that means it's gonna be closer to one. So out of these two, the closest one to a positive one is C, okay? So the stronger the correlation, the closer to one or negative one, depending on if it's positive or negative, the closer to one or negative one it will be. Okay, so if we had said that it was a negative correlation and strong, it would be really close to negative one. But since it's a positive correlation and strong, it's gonna be close to positive one. That's how you tell the difference. Okay, up next, box plots. Okay, this says the IQR or the interquartile range for the box and whiskers plot above is for the above box and whiskers plot. Now remember the inter the interquartile range is not the same as the range from before. Okay, remember the range is the maximum minus the minimum. The interquartile range is the range in the box. This is my IQR right here. Okay, from here to here. So what I'm going to do is and remember this right here is Q1 and this right here is Q3. So my interquartile range is equal to Q3 minus Q1. So Q3 is 13, Q1 is seven, so my IQR is equal to six, because 13 minus seven is six. All right, question 12, another box plot again. What percentage of the data is found between Q1 and Q3? Well, we just decided, we just talked about how this is Q1 right here, and this is Q3 right here. Now, if you remember box plots, you know that each section covers 25%. So this whisker right here is 25%. From Q1 to the median is 25%. From the median to Q3 is 25%. And from Q3 to the end of the whisker is to another 25 cent percent for a total of 100%. I want to know what's the percentage of data that's found between Q1 and Q3. It's 50. 25 and 25. So this one would be 50%. Okay. Question 13. Um, question 13, what you, from the, with these tables, you really need to pay attention to the title of the graph, or the, the table, title of table, and what the first part of the question is. Okay, so if I look at this, I got some tables here. This one is just a two-way frequency table. This one's a relative two-way frequency table based on age. This one is a relative two-way frequency table based on pets. And this one is a two-way frequency table based on total surveyed. Okay, so it says of the 14-year-olds, okay, just concentrate on that part right there. Now, if I had to choose if this was concentrating on pets or on age, I would pick age because it's of the 14-year-olds. So I want the table that shows me where 100% of the 14-year-olds are at. So if I look here, you can see that the total is 100% for my 14-year-olds. That's the one I'm looking for, okay? Now what I wanna know is, of the 14-year-olds, what percentage own a dog? So I would do 14 and dogs, and I would see that it's 60%. 60% own 
60% of 14 year olds own a dog. Okay, this table right here is 24% of those surveyed own a dog and are 14, okay? But it's, if it's just asking me of one subsection, then I need to look at the, uh, the appropriate table. Okay, so let's try this one right here. This one says, of the people who own dogs. Okay, so if I just kind of look at that piece, now instead of looking at a certain age, I wanna look at a certain pet. So I wanna look at the table that concentrates on pets. If you look down this table, you look at dogs, you look down at the bottom for the total, you'll see that this is 100% of those who own dogs. Now, of those people who own dogs, what percent of them are 13? So I go to 13 dogs and I see that it's 16%. One more, and then we're done with the review. All right, last one, question 15. Um, it says, of all the people surveyed. Now, there are two different tables that cover of all the people surveyed. This one right here talks about all the people surveyed. It's just not in percentage form. And this one, the total surveyed one, also talks about it. Now this is how many were 15 and own a cat. Now this doesn't specifically say what percentage, and so you could either answer, you should actually answer from this table because it doesn't specify what percentage, but if you gave me a percentage based off of this table, you'd be okay. So how many were 15 and owned a cat? 15 and a cat, that was 13 people. Or I could say 13, no, 15, sorry, 15 and a cat, or 10% of those surveyed. Either way, you'd be correct. Okay, that is the review. Um, hopefully, um, most of it made sense. If not, come see me and I'll help you with something um, before you take the test, but um, we've gotta get the test taken, so good luck, and you can use this on your test, so make sure that you took lots of good notes.